What if the U.S. purchased Greenland in 1946? Greenland honestly has a pretty short recorded history, so short that I can effectively tell you the entirety of it in less than a minute. Inhabited by native Paleo-Eskimo peoples and conquered by the Inuit in the 14th century, it was discovered by the Norse in the 10th century, but when a mini ice age arrived, it made the island uninhabitable for farming societies that went extinct in the 14th century. This is practically the limit of Greenland's recorded history, besides several centuries of light control by Denmark and a brief American occupation in World War II. I apologize in advance to any professors of Greenland history for putting you out of business. To completely change the topic, during the Cold War, the Russians used the northern seas between the Orkneys and Greenland as a way to get ships into the Atlantic from the White Sea and ports like Archangel and Murmansk. In 1946, the United States offered the Danes $100 million, or around a billion dollars in today's money, in exchange for control over the island. The Americans wanted to monitor Russian ships entering the Atlantic with the control of Greenland, and monitor a possible Russian attack on the American mainland with missiles from Greenland. The Danes refused to sell the island. However, they gave no reason for why they did, and the conference seems to be closed door. The Americans didn't press any further, however. The only reason I can see for the Danes not to sell the island is that they felt they would lose national pride for losing their last remaining colony besides the Pharaohs, and the Pharaohs aren't exactly a colony to be proud of. But what if the Danes had sold Greenland to the Americans? How would Greenland, and to a very small extent, the rest of the world be different? That is the question of this alternate history. The U.S.'s primary use of Greenland would be military bases. Besides the obvious reasons mentioned earlier about monitoring the Russian ships and possible missiles, Greenland is a vital midpoint between Europe and the Americas, and with World War II-era aircraft being unable to make the journey between Europe and America in a single flight, aircraft bases would be built. In our timeline, fishing is by far Greenland's major industry. This would continue in this timeline and would probably be larger, because catches could be sold in the U.S. market. Mining would also be a Greenland industry as well. Greenland is blessed with lots of natural resources. Crazy amounts of oil, some gold, some uranium, rare earth minerals, and iron, plus loads of stuff I can't pronounce or haven't heard of. That doesn't even include the stuff beneath the glaciers we don't know about. The Danes did almost no mineral research and mining in Greenland in our timeline. This was not simply because they didn't care. The cost of mining in Greenland is exorbitant, because one can't operate over the winter, permafrost exists, and the workforce is very small. This cost means that turning a profit is hard and this discourages mining. Take what I say here with a grain of salt, since I only put around four to five hours of research into a subject with almost no sources, and even less unbiased ones. Plus, that seems like a pretty complicated subject. But coastal oil mining seems very plausible with today's conditions in this timeline, and the Greenland government has even outlined an oil policy in our timeline for the very near future. On land, meanwhile, mining would probably be more prevalent than our timeline, but it would not be a massive industry. Besides these industries, Greenland would not have a lot of opportunities. The population would increase, but not drastically. The thing is that the population of Greenland is already so small, around 21,000 in 1946, that even a small trickle of Americans can seriously disturb the local hierarchy. The local Danish population at the time was around 600, and so they would not be a major issue to the new American regime. Most would probably return to Denmark, since they were probably working in the business of running the colony. Ethnic Americans would start to outnumber the local Inuit population and create clashes between the local culture and the Americans. These would, however, not lead to rebellion or major riots, since the American governments would probably lead to massive investment in Greenland and the rural Inuit that would not have to deal with American influence, since the Americans would be concentrated in pockets around American industries and towns. Would Greenland ever become a state? The answer is an almost 100% no. The population of Wyoming, the least populated state in the Union, is slightly above half a million. Greenland's population would probably be around 200,000. I'm assuming Greenland would be a conservative territory, since both rural and resource-based states almost exclusively vote Republican. Imagine having the Democrats excusing Greenland having two Senate seats and three points in the Electoral College as a state. 
The idea of having ethnic Americans permanently without representation would horrify many Americans. Puerto Rico, except for some minor self-governance, is effectively a colony, but has the option of becoming a state. Most Americans are fine with Puerto Rico in this state, since the population is mainly Hispanic, and thus viewed as other. Greenwhile, meanwhile, being ethnically American, and probably never having enough population to become a state, would not have this clause. Thus, Greenland would probably become a semi-autonomous state with some local government under the U.S. government. Greenland could only be a state in the future under two circumstances. Number one. Global warming makes it pleasant and habitable. Number two, the Democratic Party collapses in the near future, and the Republicans drunk on their power make it a state. Greenland would probably be viewed as a U.S. subculture like Louisiana, Hawaii, or New Mexico. Even though the Inuit would become a minority, their culture would still be synonymous with Greenland for non-Greenlanders. Having a U.S. presence in Greenland would also cause more interest in Norse culture. Expect a couple more movies about Vikings and some more archaeological discoveries of the Norse in the Northeast. As flight would become cheaper and travel more prevalent, Greenland would have the same saving grace as Iceland. Tourism. Being a Greenland territory would mean that there would be cheap flights to the U.S. There is a shocking amount to do in Greenland if there is simply the tourism apparatus to deal with it. One could see Viking sites, see polar bears, whales, breathtaking scenery, hiking, etc. This video is sponsored by the Greenland Board of Tourism. Subscribe now. Just kidding, but having all these U.S. tourists in Greenland would also change the way the U.S. viewed global warming. I know global warming is a contentious issue. I personally believe in it, but the point of this video is not to argue about global warming, it's history. So, for the next 10 seconds, if you don't believe in it, just humor it, its existence. The U.S. would be more likely to respond to global warming if it had its own territory melting at a quick rate, and there were lots of tourists in that territory. What if I'll test? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please comment and subscribe, and please stay tuned for my next alternate history. Thank you.